Welcome to Programming the Arduino. I'm your host, Lewis Laughlin. Here in part three, we will explore how to use the analog to digital conversion uh, in the Arduino microcontroller to read various voltages in the real world. Um, this is particularly useful for sensors to be used in things like speed controls for motors or light intensity. Again, the Arduino is in the upper left-hand corner. It is a 28-pin a DIP microcontroller, 16 megahertz RISC uh, microcontroller. Uh, besides 14 digital I.O. pins, 14,000 bytes of program memory, we will be looking at the six 10-bit A to D inputs. Here's a brief look at the electrical layout on the Arduino chip. Our six analog to digital converters are over here on the, in the upper uh, right of this drawing labeled from AN0 through AN5, that is analog 0 through analog 5. Here again is our basic schematic we've used in all of these videos. Uh, for this one we're mostly going to be concerned with a 10K pot or potentiometer that's connected to analog 0. For this experiment you will also need these two LEDs connected to digital pins 9 and 10. Okay, what is an analog to digital converter? Um, microcontroller circuits, which are digital circuits, do not understand what a voltage is. They only know numbers. And the only things they understand are digital zeros and digital ones. Um, 1 being 5 volts, 0 being 0 volts. Okay, 10 bits in binary can give you a value from 0 to 1023 decimal. Again, 10 bits in binary can give you a, uh, gives you a number from 0 to 1023 in decimal. So if you're looking at the connection here, the wiper on the potentiometer connects to analog zero. One side's connected to ground, the other side is connected to five volts. A potentiometer is a variable voltage divider. So going from zero to five volts, okay, looking down here, five volts divided by 1,024 steps will give you 4.88 millivolts per step. So if you're looking at it in the terms of maybe a counter, every time I go up 4.88 millivolts, I add 1. If I go down 4.88 millivolts, I go down 1. For example, 2.5 volts divided by 4.88 millivolts gives me the number 512 in decimal. And if, and if I have 5 volts, for example, I'm going to get 1,023. So uh, the number that you get back, if you multiply four, by 4.88 millivolts, that you'll know what the voltage on the electrical pin really is. Here is a picture of a potentiometer. Uh, a lot of us, you might call it a volume control that you've seen in the past. Looking real close here, one pin is connected to 5 volts. The other outer pin is going to ground. And the center pin, while the drawing shows this going to analog uh, pin 2, I'm using analog 0. But the other two connections are identical. Here again is another drawing of this particular potentiometer or variable voltage divider. 
One side goes to five, one side goes to ground, and the wiper in the center uh, goes to the analog pin. This is what the potentiometer looks like internally. The two outer pins that went to ground and 5 volts connect to what is actually a carbon track. When you turn the knob, you're, you have a slider that's connected to this uh, center pin that moves along the carbon track. And thus, the it's really... Um, that's what makes it a voltage divider. Here's some pictures of some very small potentiometers. These are used in circuit boards. Here's another type of potentiometer that's a long slider. You will see these used, for example, in some older stereo equipment, such as an equalizer. Also for this experiment, to look at it briefly again, I have these two LEDs connected in the source configuration on digital pins 9 and digital pins 10. Alright, here's a blowout of my program. Let's walk through this. Define pot as zero. Okay, I a uh, potentiometer that's connected to analog zero. I call it pot for short. But anywhere I use the term pot, it will the program will know I'm talking about analog input zero. All right. Define LED1 is 9. You saw back in the earlier drawing that an LED was connected to digital pin 9. Anywhere I use LED1, it will know it's 9. Same thing with LED2 connected to digital pin 10. You really want to write your programs like this because what if I had to change, for example, connect my pot to analog 2, all I would have to do is change it up here and I wouldn't have to change the whole back, go back through the whole program. Okay. Here is my setup. There are no setup instructions uh, for the analog pins. They're always analog pins. They're always an input. You cannot change them to an output. But I did have to set up the state of the uh, pins I connected the LEDs to, which are, both had to be outputs. Now we come to the loop. This is repeated endlessly. Let's look at the first line. I defined an uh, in, integer j. Okay, um, and I use the command analog read pot. Okay, it knows that pot means zero, that is analog pin zero. And j is going to have a number from 0 to 1023 depending on what position I adjust the pot to. It will return a number based on the position of where I turn the potentiometer. If the potentiometer, assuming it's connected up where I go fully uh, one end to ground, it'll return 0. If the other end fully turns, say, clockwise to goes to 5 volts, it's going to return 1,023. If it's anywhere in between, it's going to be 2 to 1,022. This, let's look at this little statement here. If J, that's the number that was returned from the pot, from the analog read command, is less than or equal to 512, then digital write LED1 high. That is, if my input voltage from the pot is 2.5 volts or less, giving me 512 or less than 512, LED1 is going to be high. It's going to turn on. But if it fails, else, if it is greater than 512, It'll, oper it'll um, do the else command instead and give me a digital write LED1 low. So LED1 
Um, if J is less than and equal to 512, we'll turn on. Um, LED will come on. Otherwise, it will go off. The second command down here, if J is greater than uh, 512, digital write LED to high. Else, LED to will be low. So as you adjust the pot from end to end, um if it's if it's less than 2.5 volts led one will light up that's the one connected to digital pin 9 if it's greater than 2.5 volts then led 2 connected to digital pin 10 will come on you just turn it back and forth and the LED, and the appropriate led will go on and off that's how you can tell where your voltage is All right. Okay, here's a little bit of a different statement. Again, all of it is exactly the same, but I've programmed this understanding that an if statement, if this uh, statement is true, then it will um, do the preceding command. If not, it'll skip it. What I've done here is I'm looking for two things. If J is greater than or equal to 512, it has to be greater than 2.5 volts, and J has to be less than 800, what I'm doing is I'm looking for a range. In this case, if you put a digital voltmeter on the analog pin with this particular bit of programming, you'll find out that the LED1 will come on at 2.5 volts, and it will stay on until you get to 3.9 volts. When you go past 3.9, it will go off. So what I've done here is I can measure a range. I can measure a voltage on part of the... Um, turn of the pot. The pot doesn't do 360, it probably does 270. But I can find a range. Alright, pictured here are some voltage dividers. I don't have to use a pot connected to an analog pin, I can use a voltage divider. In the case of this, R1 is a photocell and R2 is a fixed resistor. A photocell is an electronic component that if you shine light on it, the resistance drops. So, say I have this connected up outside and I want to tell how bright the sun is. Well, as the sun gets brighter, the resistance on R1 drops and the voltage here at B that's connected to my uh, analog input will rise. And and, uh, and it will go up to eh, probably 4.8 volts. It can't, unless the resistor goes totally to zero ohms, which it, the photocell going to zero ohms, it won't happen. They're not made that way. But this way, I can measure the light intensity. So if I had the appropriate photocell and resistor values set up, I could, for instance, um, turn on a device instead of an LED. The LED could be it could be programmed to turn on the LED at certain light levels, through certain light levels, but not others. Again, in this case, a photocell's resistance drops the brighter the light, and of course, the voltage is going to rise as the light gets brighter. Figure B is going to be the opposite effect. Remember, R1 is fixed. It doesn't change. And as the intensity gets brighter and the resistance on R2, the photocell in this case, drops, the voltage here will drop and the number returned from the analog to digital converter will be smaller. 
just to give you an idea, that's how we can read light intensity. Either way you want to do it, either brighter or not so bright, depending on how you hook it up. Here are some pictures of photocells. This is what they look like. They're also the electric eyes that are used in street lights. They're cadmium sulfide, shine light on it, resistance drops. Okay, shown here are thermistors. These are um, temperature dependent resistors. As you change the temperature, the resistance will increase or decrease depending on how it's designed. You can use it in the same voltage divider setup that you saw two frames ago. Here's an illustration for instance. Got a photocell hooked up to a resistor or you can hook a pot to it. This is a shielded cable. For these analog sensors it is a real good idea to use a shielded cable because you get noise on the analog pin you could get uh, bad readings. Okay, and that completes part three, uh, and we're ready to go to part four. Part four, we're going to look into what is pulse width modulation. If we use pulse width modulation with a variable resistor connected to a uh, analog pin, hey, we can control light intensity and motor speed. So let's go to part four and find out what is pulse width modulation. And thanks for viewing the video and visit my website www.bristolwatch.com.